Welcome to Python 3 Advanced 2, Templates. In this video we'll be looking at templating, what it is, how to use it and why to use it. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. Ok, so what is a template? Well a template is just like it sounds, it's a formatted layout that you fill with important things. The Python template module is part of the string module as it uses a string to define the template. The template's key feature is that it allows for data to change without having to edit the application every time. So how does it work? Well the template class takes a string as a template. Within the string we use placeholder variable names with the preceding dollar sign to depict that it's a placeholder. We can then substitute values into the template with the substitute method using a dictionary, where the keys in the dictionary match the placeholder names. The return string is the template with all of the values rather than the placeholders. It should also be noted that the placeholder variables should follow the same naming convention as Python. Ok, let's make something now. We'll make a simple output program that will output info about a user's shopping cart. We'll use a template to format the output and fill it with the cart's info. So let's create a file called cart.py. Ok, so I'll come over to Ubuntu here. And we're going to create a file called cart.py. So open it in Vim. Alright. So we need to import the template class first. So from string import template with a capital T. Alright, now let's define our main function. So def main colon. Alright, let's create our cart. So our cart is going to be a list. So we'll start off as an empty list. And we're going to append uh, dictionaries into them, into it. Okay, so our cart dot append, and we're going to place a dictionary in there, and the dictionary is going to have our key names. So we're going to have a key called item, which is going to be the item. That's going to equal, we'll say, Coke, and we're going to have a key called price, and that's going to equal, say, eight. And we'll create a quantity key, which we'll say equals 2. Alright, let's uh, add in a couple more things into our cart. So cart.append, addict, and our item this time will equal, let's say, cake. The price of the cake is 12. And the quantity equals 1. And we'll add one last thing, cart.append, dict, and our item is going to equal, we'll do fish. Our price is going to equal, let's say, 32. And our quantity will equal 4. All right. So we've created our cart, we've put in our dictionaries with the item, the price, and the quantity. It's now time to make our template. So we'll call our template object T, make it equal to a new template. So template. And inside the parameters, we're going to create our template. So we're going to use the dollar sign to indicate a placeholder. So we're going to do placeholder quantity. So the quantity uh, key from our dictionary space, which will end the placeholder, x, space, our dollar sign again, and we're going to do the item now, so it'll be, say, 2 times coke, and then we'll do space equals dollar sign price, and that'll grab the price out of our dictionary. So we'll get, for the first item, we'll get uh, 2 times coke equals 8. Alright, so we'll close off our template string, and close off our template. Now let's just create a variable called total, and we'll calculate a total cost. We'll initialize that to zero. And then we'll print out the start of our cart. So cart, colon, close that off, close our print. Now let's write our for loop. So this is where we're going to substitute each of the items in our cart. So for data in cart. We're going to print t dot 
So tr template dot substi yeah substitute. We're going to substitute the data, and we'll close off our print. And the next line will calculate our total. So our total plus equals the data, and we want to grab the price key out. All right. So we've calculated our total now. So outside of our for loop, we're going to just print out what the total is. So print, and we'll do total colon space close quote plus string of total. And we'll close off our print. All right, we'll write our if name equals main. So if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore. And we're going to uh, we're going to run main. Yeah. Main. All right. So let's save this up. So right quit. And we're going to run it. So Python 3 cart.py. We run that. We get our output. So we have our cart. 2 times Coke equals 8. 1 times cake equals 12. 4 times fish equals 32. And our total price is 52. All right. Cool. So that all worked. It all substituted each of the values into our placeholders. Awesome. Errors are possible in templates, but mostly occur while you're programming. So for debug purposes, here are the common ones. First, no placeholder match, which will give a key error. This is usually because there was no key or value in the dictionary to give to the placeholder. And secondly, we have a bad placeholder, which will give a value error. This is usually a placeholder starting with an invalid character or being non-existent, though it's usually a number. We can have the template handle these problems for us by using the safe underscore substitute method of the template class. This will return a string no matter what. However, any unresolved keys and braces will be left in the resulting string. As we can see in the example, the template $name had $money is only given given the value for the name, resulting in the output Jim had dollar sign money, rather than the proper output. So though it handles these errors, it should only be used where an error may occur out of your control. Otherwise, it's considered sloppy coding to leave unused and dangling keys in your templates, which may cause errors down the track. It's also possible for us to create custom delimiters by creating a subclass and overriding the default in the template class. This is great when the user may be creating the template from the command line. So let's edit our current program to use a hash symbol rather than a dollar sign. All right, so we'll come back over to Ubuntu and we'll edit our cart. Now inside here, just above our main, we're gonna create our custom class. So class, and we'll call it my template. And as a base class, it's gonna take the template class as a base class. All right. Now we're going to just modify the delimiter. So to do this, we just say delimiter delimiter equals, and we're going to do the hash character. All right. So now that we've overridden our template, we need to change our construction of our template. So to do this, we come down to where we initialize our template. We're going to use our my template instead of template. And inside of our template, instead of having dollar signs, we're going to use hashes. So we've got to remove all of the dollar signs and put our hashes in. There we go. Now we can save this, give it a run, and we'll be able to see that it runs just as it did before. But this time we're using hashes as the delimiter. Awesome. So now we have looked at how to use a template. Why should we use one? The main reason for me is that it saves time and reduces the size of my code files. But it's also good for allowing the user to create templates. For example, a program that renames all of your image files in a directory with the rename style they construct. As seen here, we would rename all of the photos with the name myphoto underscore the file number plus the images format. Templates are also extremely useful for web pages because usually a page will look the same but contain different data. This works great with CGI programming in Python, but more on that in a later tutorial. You may ask, why not just use the string.format method? 
Well, you can think of a template as an object of the format string. It holds onto the template so you can substitute values at any time into the template without having to write it again. As an added bonus, it provides the safe underscore substitute method, which means if a value is missing from your program, it does not crash. Some things to note about templates is that you can escape the delimiter if needed by using two consecutive delimiters. For example, the template you owe me dollar sign dollar sign zero will use the dollar sign as a character rather than a placeholder. We can also use custom regular expressions on templates when we create subclasses and override the ID pattern variable. By default, it's set to accept underscores and alphanumeric characters. We can also use curly braces to identify which part of the delimiter is the placeholder variable name. In this example, I have the template, the place yard is far away, where the yard is appended to the result of the placeholder. So if we were to use the value ship, the output would be the shipyard is far away, but this could be replaced with farm or a number of other places. I hope you now have an understanding of what templates are and how they work and when to use them. Of course, they won't always be practical, but sometimes they can be a lifesaver. Next, we're going to cover argparse. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.